Hello YouTube and welcome to another lesson on astral projection. This week we will focus on astral projection and thought forms. If you haven't watched the, the previous videos, I suggest that you do so so that we will have a better understanding of what we are talking about here. You can watch this video alone, but it would be very helpful if you watch the, the, the ones from the previous weeks. So getting on with it, today we will, we will study what thought forms are. So in order to get a, an understanding, a quick understanding before we go on to the little diagram here, of what a thought form is, let's think of the word rose. If we think of the word rose, immediately a image of a rose will pop into our mind. This is what a thought form is in its most basic level. This is what we're talking about. We're not talking about a way of thinking. We're not talking about <clears throat> a doctrine or anything like that. We're talking about the shapes, about the forms that appear in our mind when we think. Basically, this is what it is. So. Getting on to it, we have a diagram here, and in this diagram we're going to focus right now on the, what we call the physical plane. Then we're going to go on into the astral plane. First on the physical. So, we have a little, our little stick figure here, and a little stick figure we put here, the word consciousness, meaning that his consciousness for now is occupied with all of these shapes and forms that are here. But let's go on and see what, what's actually happening. One thought that he might have is about bills and about payments that he might have to do. Many of us uh, are in this situation that we have to pay bills, that we have to pay um, uh, just to uh, continue living. This is a fact of life. Now, if money is short, this will create an anxiety. It can get to the point where it gets so scary that bill collectors might start calling us, things of this nature. This will create, this is why we put this little image right here, the money sign here and with the little teeth right here chasing our little friend stick figure here and this is the the thought that might come on that might come in to his mind another one another thought might be uh when he watches for example a romance movie although most most men stick figures might not enjoy the the romance movies but he might enjoy the hero movie so that's why i put the hero movie so with the hero movie might come uh, one of the characters might be a, the, the leading lady of the superhero or whatever and the stick figure here will form an opinion of what his best or what his favorite lady would actually be or how his, his, his the woman of his dreams might look like or might be like. This is how it's actually formed. Here we put through movies but it could be through any kind of other impression. It could be through books. It could be through somebody else's friend. We just put here this example like this. So another one that we have is foods. Now um, he might be thinking about a cake. Now again just like the example with the rose if I say the word cake there's going to be a mental image in it and not only uh, can we just say the word cake let's get a little more uh, advanced with this. Imagine a very nice cheesecake, luscious, creamy, soft, just, just came out of the refrigerator with a nice cherry on top. If I keep going, we could actually start to salivate, we could actually start to smell the cheesecake. That's a thought form based on food. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? So we could do the same with pizza here too. So another one, uh, and this is one that's a little more deeper, would be uh, traumas. Uh, perhaps maybe when he was a child, he was abandoned a little bit by his mother or by his father. He was left alone for a little while. And uh, the little child, uh, the little stick figure child here, uh, couldn't take it. And he formed certain traumas about being alone. Or maybe he was uh, crying too much when he was little and nobody really paid too much attention to him. So he became a bit depressed. We're talking about a sadness, we're talking about uh, depression here. We're saying that these kinds of things actually come from some sort of trauma some at some point in our lives. So this is what's going on in the astral plane. Now, we're not saying that it's just, that it's just this. It, it is an enormous amount of thoughts that occur during the day. We just decided to make this little diagram just as an example. So this is what happens in the physical plane. Now, excuse me, I'm gonna get my eraser. And now we're going to talk about what happens in the astral plane. The astral plane is a little bit different. So what happens in the astral plane 
is everything that actually occurred in the physical disappears but something remains and I, if you're watching what I'm doing you'll be able to understand what it is that I'm trying to convey here or the message that we're trying to convey here when we go into the astral now remember a dream is nothing more than an astral experience or astral travel where we were not awake so what happens in the astral is remember he was in debt he won't necessarily dream about being in debt he might dream about a monster chasing him this is a thought form he won't dream about the movie he watched he might dream of his dream girl so this is another thought form over here he won't necessarily dream about eating but he will have thoughts or even tastes about cake or about pizza and here comes the ones that are a little bit more um, uh, uh, deep you could say uh, there are dreams where we find ourselves yelling and we don't know why or there are dreams where we find ourselves extremely frustrated and we don't know why dreams where we are just fighting in, in a in a very intense manner these would be yelling dreams or these would be crying dreams so or very sad dreams rather we could have a dream where uh, for example somebody dies and in reality no one has died it is a sad dream it is we see the thought form of crying we see the thought form of sadness we we see the dream about dying and we get pretty preoccupied we get worried we get concerned oh wow why did i dream about dying when in reality death might symbolize something else it might lead to one of the traumas that we had uh, drawn up here before so as you can see this is how this is how the thought forms affect us when we are in the astral plane so our little stick figure here got out our little stick figure got out this is what we're trying to draw here excuse me our little stick figure got out he got out and now he's over here and he's flying here but he can't get out because of his thought forms now if he were to practice wakefulness here or awareness if he were to practice awareness here he could ask the he could actually do the breathing technique while he's in the astral realm he could actually do the questioning technique who am i where am i what am i all these questions while he's in the astral when he does that then, and I'm sorry I'm getting my eraser here again, when um, he does that, what will happen is these thought forms will disappear right before his very eyes. Now they might come back, and they definitely will come back if we don't resolve them, if we don't know their origin. So, if we practice awareness, he will have, the thought form there will definitely have, I mean, excuse me rather, the person there will, will actually have his awareness to be able to go out into the astral realm and visit whatever place that he wants to do. So this is how uh, thought forms affect us. So let's say, for example, somebody wants to get out of body and investigate a topic such as um, aliens. Now, some of you on Facebook might know why I'm referring to this, but let's say that you want to do this and as soon as you get out of body you um, find yourself in a very scary place you find that the aliens are very scary and all this might it not be just a reflection of your own thought forms might it not be something that you have to work through this is what we have to understand so how do we do this how do we achieve this awareness without any thought forms in the astral realm so here comes the tip of the day and this tip of the day is brought to you by Mr. William Bullman. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if uh, many of you don't know, he is a great author on astral projection or out-of-body experiences. What he recommends in these, in these uh, cases is to actually look at the thought from whatever it might be. And while you're in the astral realm, ask it directly. Who are you? What are you? Identify yourself. For example, if you see a big monster, go up to it, ask it, what are you? 
99% of the time it's going to be a thought form and it will vanish right before your eyes and you will be able to continue in the astral realm. Now, what about that 1% time? What's gonna happen in that 1% time that it won't disappear? Usually it won't be a monster, it'll be something pleasant and you will confront it and it won't disappear. It will be a manifestation, but that is next week's uh, lesson, Manifestations of Consciousness Virtues. So that'll be for next week, what to do when you confront something that you think is a thought form and actually is not. A thought form will disappear, just like the images of the rose that we were talking about a few minutes ago disappeared already. The thought forms in the astral will disappear once we achieve awareness in the astral realm. What uh, will not disappear are the manifestations of consciousness or the virtues. They are permanent, they will not disappear. But that is for next week. Please, if you really enjoyed this uh, lesson today, please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps us out. And don't forget to hit that like button. So remember, next week we have uh, the lesson on manifestations, consciousness, and astral projection. Also, in the upcoming weeks, we will be interviewing some of our members from the Facebook group. And please look forward to that because that is coming really soon. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you next week. Thank you.